You're listening to the Back Home Network, presented by Homefield Apparel. And welcome, Hoosier fans, to another edition of the Inside Scoop with Tamar Bates. I'm your host, Jared Morris, and I know it's been a while. We haven't had an episode since the NCAA tournament, since uh, since before the Wyoming game. Uh, and look, you know, we've been trying to. <laughs> he, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. The off season hits. Uh, you know, the summer comes, and uh, as he and I talked about, you know. I've got a 15-month-old son. He's got a young daughter. Man, you got young kids. It's hard to uh, to plan podcast episodes, and uh, you know, so it's taken us a while to get to the latest episode of the Inside Scoop up. But it is going to be worth the wait. I promise you. Uh, Tamar texted me last week, and he said the freshmen want to hop on an episode with us. I was like, all right, let's find a time. We were able to. Uh, so Friday, June 23rd, uh, hopped on Zoom with Tamar. And with the entire freshman class, Jalen Hutchifino, Caleb Banks, CJ Gunn, Malik Renu, uh, they are all on this episode for just a great conversation. Um, and you know, I'll tell you what makes this unique and why I think you're really going to enjoy it. Whether you listen to the audio or the video, and the video is on YouTube, I would recommend the video for this one just to be able to kind of see the faces and I think you'll get a better uh, feel of the interplay. But, you know, we've gotten to know a lot of these guys. You know, a lot of these guys have been featured on the Hoosier Hysterics podcast or, you know, Jalen Huchifino did a media availability. And so we've gotten to see some of these guys kind of one-on-one. But the, <laughs> this episode really, I think, is going to almost at certain points kind of feel like a, a little peek inside the locker room when they kind of forget I'm there, <laughs> just start talking. And that's the good stuff. Uh, and there are definitely some moments there. Uh, I wanted to kind of do something fun and interesting. And so, you know, kind of came up with this fun little game called Teammate Trivia, you know, and asked the guys questions about each other. And uh, I definitely dropped a bomb on the conversation at one point when I asked CJ uh, if he talks trash uh, about, you know, being from the state of Indiana and how the state of Indiana has the best high school basketball. And clearly, that is a topic that has come up <laughs> amongst these guys already. Uh, and so so you'll enjoy that. But, you know, really, from my perspective, it was just a lot of fun to do this episode, uh, you know, a privilege to do it with these guys. I appreciate, uh, you know, Tamar setting it up and all the guys being willing to do it. And I think you're really, really going to enjoy this. So have fun listening to this episode of The Inside Scoop with Tamar Bates brought to you by our friends at Speakeasy Sales Copy. Here we go. Let's get to it. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll get started here in just a second. We'll go for about forty-five minutes or so. Um, I've got a little something fun planned for the end, so we'll uh, we'll do that um, before we close up. But appreciate you guys all being here. This will be a fun episode. Thanks for setting this up, sir. Yes, sir. For yes, TB. Oh. Good to be here. Right. Yeah, because I was uh, I can't remember what me and Fino was talking about. But like we, we, this was like while we were signing the autographs, and like I, I like I just I don't know how it came up, but I was like, yeah, I got my own podcast. He was like, for real? <laughs> I said, yeah, y'all. It's I, just I, been I, dormant for a while. We just haven't done any episodes for a while. We just ain't did okay. it in a minute. We was talking yeah. about the Draymond. Yeah, oh, we, yeah, yeah. We was talking about Draymond Green. Yeah, we was talking mm-hmm. about his because I, I, I be watching his like he's hilarious, bro. Yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. hilarious. Okay. Well, cool. Well, welcome back to the Inside Scoop. It has uh, been a while since our last episode, which, uh, Scoop, I think we did ahead of the Wyoming game. Isn't the last time that we got on here? Yeah. The last time. Um, But I promise this episode is going to be worth the wait because not only is Scoop here himself, but he brought some friends with him. Uh, So, Scoop, I will let you do the honors. Why don't you introduce our guests on the Inside Scoop this episode? All righty. So, um... Obviously, I'm sure you guys like can tell by their faces who these uh, four are, but these are our uh, um, incoming freshmen who will be part of the team um, this season. And you know, obviously, everybody that has like seen like the the hype around these guys and just like writing and but like you know, I get to you know spend time with them up close and play with them. So you know, we're excited um, for this upcoming season. But I let them introduce themselves. Go ahead, you know. Yeah. And for those of you who are listening on the podcast, we will have the video on YouTube. But yes, if you're listening on the podcast, let's go around. And yeah, why don't you guys all just introduce yourselves? And, uh, you know, since you're new to Bloomington, just got on campus, tell us your favorite thing about Bloomington so far. Jalen, let's start with you. 
Yeah, um, my name is Jane LaHood Shafino. Um, you know, this is like my third week down here. So overall, it's been a great experience. Been enjoying it with the guys, getting to learn everybody's personality and everything, just getting out to work with them. But, um, you know, for me, my favorite part is just pretty much just, like I said, being around the guys, just vibing with them and, you know, just getting a feel for everybody. So I think this year is going to be a, you know, a special year. Absolutely. Caleb, I'll go next. Uh, Caleb, you going next or you want me to? Uh, you got it. You got it. All right. I'm Malik Renew. Um, I'm from Miami, Florida. Incoming freshman. And uh, favorite thing around Indiana is probably the food spots. They got some good food spots out here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Have you decided yeah. on a favorite yet? No, nah, not yet. Every, every spot I went to is pretty good. Some that one taco spot. I ain't going to speak on that one. <laughs> uh, All right, Caleb. Nah, nah, nah. Said, well, you know, my name is Kevin Banks. I'm uh, <laughs> south side of Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, my favorite thing about Bloomington probably be the love for, for basketball around the city, around the town. And I'd say my favorite food spot is probably like uh, Buffalo Louis. Buffalo Louis. You can <laughs> never go wrong with Buffalo Louis. I knew you were going to say that. That's okay. a good one. Yeah, all right. And CJ? Uh, so, y'all, my name is uh, CJ Gunn. I'm from Indianapolis, up in the Fishers area. Uh, my favorite part about Bloom is just probably uh, being in the gym and the weight room, getting better with these guys every single day, just creating that bond. You know, can't wait for the season to start, for real. Yeah. And Bloomington's pretty familiar for you, uh, given Definitely. you've been up here <laughs> many times. I've been up here quite a few times. Do you have, like, a favorite place that you, like, took the guys to, like, hey, this is, like, the best spot to go to? I ain't even I ain't even took them no, to no spot yet, so we, we still got to have to do that. It's coming. It's yeah. coming. All right, well, Scoop, why don't you uh, update everybody on how your offseason has been going? You know, I imagine you've spent some time at home, have done plenty of working out. What have been the highlights so far since the season um, ended when we last spoke? I mean, this. so this is, like, so obviously, like coming back and like knowing what to expect, like in the off season, like coming into my sophomore year, like I kind of knew how everything was gonna shake out. But like the highlight has really just been like spending time with my daughter. Like honestly, like it's like whenever I do get to go home or like when I was home, like after the season, like it, that was like the the best part. It's, it's always the best time for me, like because that's just like like being a father. Like that's 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 number one for me now. But that just makes me, you know. When I do come back, you know, it, you know, turns my focus up just a little bit more because it's like now I'm not doing all of this for me. It's not just for me no more. So, um, you know, spending time with, with Leilani, that's been that's been the best part of the offseason. But other than that, like they said, you know, just, you know, getting around everyone and getting the whole group back together. Uh, we, we've all been enjoying each other. So, you know, it's, it's all been good for me. What's your favorite thing to do with her? I mean, she, okay, so she's three months. So, yeah, you know, it's not really too much that I can do with her. But, I mean, a lot, like, but she's, like, smi like she smiles a lot. Like, she la like she'll laugh, like, every, like, 10 hours. But she smiles all day. So, I mean, I just, like, like you know, I'll just put her in front of me, like, have her, like, facing me, like, just be holding her. And, like, kind of, like, talk, you know, like, you talk to babies and all that. But it's, like, just, like, smiling, like, she's smiling back. Just, like, and I like sleeping with her, too. Like, cause see, th those are probably the best cuddles. <laughs> like, we, yes, we and she she takes a lot of naps, so yeah, putting her to That's sleep. Awesome. Yeah, and then just just sitting with her and you know maybe like putting her in the stroller, going on a walk, so little stuff like that until she can do a little bit more. It's the best, man. There's nothing better than being a parent. For people who are listening on the podcast, it's cool seeing you talk about her, seeing your face light up when you talk about her. It's neat, man. It's a, it truly is an experience unlike any other, uh, which it seems like you are, uh, you're enjoying, which is awesome. Very cool, man. Very cool. So guys, we are, uh, talking on June 24th and we got some very interesting news today, which is that Indiana's opponent for the big 10 ACC challenge is going to be North Carolina, uh, which is just going to be an epic battle, which means in the non-conference schedule, you're going to be facing North Carolina at home, Kansas in Allen Fieldhouse, and Arizona in Las Vegas, which is, according to T-Rank, three of the top 15 teams in the country. 
Uh, I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are on the schedule and the ability to play this kind of high level competition. Uh, Jalen, why don't we why don't we start with you? I know we're kind of on Zoom, so if you guys want to pop in with this, maybe just raise your hand up real quick, and that way we don't all talk uh, over each other. But Jalen, I'm curious, you know, what are your thoughts on the schedule and seeing the news today that we're going to be playing North Carolina? And for us already, we already have. I mean, us as an Indiana team, we already have like the buzz coming in. So just to hear, you know, these games being said, it's really just fuel to the fire. Like I know every day we've been, you know, going at it, working hard. It's been a lot of energy in the gym. So I know. You know, when the time comes and we play these teams, we're going to be ready. So it's just, it's going to be great. It's going to be fun. How different do you think it'll be, Scoop, this season? Because obviously last year, Coach Woodson's first season, you know, the non-conference schedule was definitely geared toward kind of ramping up, learning a new system, giving you guys some time to, you know, to get going, not facing as as high a competition. This year, I mean, it's on from the beginning. Right. Um, I feel like it's a, I guess a really good thing just that, this is his second year. So now it's like for the guy, for the returners, like really, and then it's just like, we all know exactly what's going on, what he expects, like how he's going to coach and, you know, what the season looks like. And just like, we know each other a little bit better. Like, and that's like from the staff down, like to the players. Cause it's like last year, it's his first year in the college game and we're all new to him. So he's teaching us a whole new system. So it was a lot more time spent on teaching and learning rather than us just getting straight to it because we know what to do. Now we, we know what to do. Like the culture is starting to be set a little bit more. So and now it's just about, you know, getting these guys on the same track and then we take off from there. But in terms of the um, the, the uh, non-conference schedule, I feel like that's great for us. Cause it's like last year, like you said, like it wasn't, our non-conference schedule wasn't that strong. So I feel like, you know, playing against these two, like these good teams, like the, National champion, national champion, runner-up. You got Arizona. We, we still don't know who we'll get for the Gavit games. So yeah. it's like, that was what I wanted. Like, I'm watching all these other teams last year have this, like, packed, like, tough non-conference schedule. And I'm like, I want to do that. Like, I want to play these teams, like, before we get into conference play. So it's just um, – to me, for me, it's just – I'm just grateful, like, for the opportunity. But like Fino said, you know, it's like we, this is where we – this is what we're supposed to be doing. Like, we're supposed to be playing these teams, so. I feel like it'd be good for us. Yeah. You know, and look, and obviously a big part of, you know, getting ready to play games like that, especially if you guys who you know are new, going to be freshmen, is getting your bodies ready for college basketball. And so, you know, CJ and Caleb, I'm really curious from your guys' perspective. The other guys obviously went, you know, to prep schools for a year. So I want to hear from them too. You guys didn't. I'm curious how much different the workouts that you're doing now with Coach Marshall are from what you did in high school, maybe CJ, if you want to take that first, like what is, what is the difference in intensity and actual, you know, exercises that you're doing? How different is that? Yeah, I would, I would say the biggest, the biggest different, the di biggest difference for me is uh, the speed in which everything is done. So like the, the, um, the speed is, is just crazy. Uh, we, we're definitely not as focused on our, on our nutrition as, as we are in the weight room uh, in high school, but it's definitely a big switch, but you know, uh, I'm willing to make them switches, and so is Caleb, and so is the rest of the team, and and we'll do anything possible to, possible to get ready for this season. So I feel like um, we we're going to go into the season uh, well prepared and and come out killing from the jump. Yeah, Caleb, how's it been different for you? Well, like CJ said, probably speed and intensity, probably so. But I feel like it's preparing me for the um the game, like nice type of schedule when we take on Kansas and uh, North Carolina teams like that. So. You just got to get used to it and you know, get it right. Yeah. Malik, have you noticed a big difference too? I mean, coming from, you know, from Montverde where, you know, we often hear, you know, the, the workouts at these prep schools, it's like being in a college program, you know, already. Do you feel like it really prepared you to kind of be a step ahead getting here? On some levels, um, I say, I mean, it's definitely a big difference from the weight room standpoint um, coming from Mount Verde. Um, we, you know, we're in the weight room way more than we are in high school. So definitely just, you know, trying to get my body right, eating the right stuff and all types of things is definitely going to prepare me to um, play better on the court. On the court, it's the same thing. Competition's there. Everybody's bumping head to head. And that's what you want to see. I mean, coming in the first two weeks, the, you know, the freshman group, you know, we just trying to understand what Coach Wilson's trying to, um, you know, set on the defense. And not, he's not worried about what we're doing on offense because he's going to let that flow. So on the defense end, we really got to understand what, 
what he's talking about and lock in so we can, you know, compete with the, the older guys and just, you know, have a competitive practice every day. Yeah. So if you're an entrepreneur, business owner, or marketer, you know how much your messaging matters. Bob Knight said, all of us learn to write in the second grade. Most of us go on to do greater things. And coaches write about some writing, but not copywriting. The kind of writing that grows your business through memorable messaging and marketing. Any business can dominate the competition and win big with a world-class copywriter crafting time-saving and money-making emails, landing pages, ads, and more for you. Clay Manley from Speakeasy Sales Copy is one of the world's best, and he lends his talents to small businesses. Clay is an IU alum and an award-winning writer whose words have been trusted by Marvel, Slim Jim, Petco, and many other household names. After getting sick of helping the rich get richer, he left corporate copywriting to focus on helping small businesses grow. If your business could benefit from stronger messaging, then contact Clay at clay at speakeasysalescopy.com. And as a listener of the show, you can sample his proven playbook of million-dollar messaging secrets for free. Just go to speakeasysalescopy.com slash scoop for more. That's speakeasysalescopy.com slash scoop. This could be your banner year, and your copy is the X Factor. Contact Clay at Speakeasy Sales Copy today. So last weekend, um, Anthony Leal and Miller and Jordan were at Switchyard, and my colleague uh, Galen Clavio interviewed them. And Anthony let us know that a lot of times when you guys do workouts, it's him and the four freshmen. And he's often the one playing point guard. Uh, Jalen, how would you critique Anthony's point guard skills so far? Um, I think Anthony Lill does a good job of just leading, leading by example. Um, If you see him coming to the gym, sometimes he's going to be like some probably the first or second guy there. He's always talking and communicating. So I think he does a good job of helping, you know, the other freshmen out. Now they were they got into a conversation about trash talk, and I think you know Galen asked him who's the biggest trash talker on the team, or who would the teammates say is the biggest trash talker, and he said they might say him. Is Leo that big of a trash talker in practice? I mean, I would say that to me, I think the biggest tra- trash talker from just knowing this person for for like a couple of years now, I would say Scoop. Like I, I played, <laughs> I, I, like, I played against Scoop my junior year when he was at IMG and like he was talking like a lot so like that was probably like I think that might have been my first time playing him maybe second but he was just talking a lot so just seeing his energy um during the games and then being around him in practice you know I, I'd definitely say he's probably a trash talker CJ now, who, now, okay do you want to respond I, to that I, scoop? I talk I do talk but it's like now I feel like I've like you I, down. I've channeled it I've channeled it more Cause yeah. then I was more, I was a rocky. Like I'm, I'm just, boom, 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 I'm shooting. But yeah, yeah. Now, um, I mean, I feel like more of it is more so focused towards my teammates. Like, yeah, like motivating everybody else and leading, like with my voice and by example. So now I will like talk, but I mean now it's like I'm not really gonna, I'm not really gonna start it. I'll finish it though. Like if you if you want like you want to get on that okay let let let's do it but um other than that what Fino said was I got something to add to that go yeah ahead. go I ahead say, Malik I say what what Anthony it's more of a like a um he's dedicated to the game that's why he you know because when somebody get fouled he's like oh that's a foul like he's so like dedicated towards the the game of basketball that's why you hear a lot from Anthony so to speak like he's so like um he's so into the game. That's why you hear a lot of Anthony. Yeah, he with did, Scoop he did it. Cares. Yeah, with Scoop, it it's if you talk, cares. you talk to Scoop first, and you start talking crazy to Scoop first. That's when, and when you start talking crazy to Scoop first, that's when like that's when he gonna come in and start talking back to you. So you gotta really know who you like going, you know, talking to. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm one of them dudes. Like, if somebody talks to me, like, I'm not gonna crumble. Like, I'm gonna yeah. now. I'm not okay. Now I'm gonna play better. Like, but yeah, that motivates. Nah, that that practice, motivates a lot of people. Like, but nah, Ed just cares. Like he, like he's like like everybody else. But like yeah. you know, it's yeah. You know, he just he just plays hard. Yeah. All right. So who's the biggest talker among the four freshmen? Hmm. Me. <laughs> who, who said, said me? Who said that? Jalen. Who's Shavino? 
Jalen. Okay. Scoop, um, would you concur with that? Yeah, I mean, Fino hasn't like he like in terms of like playing, like we all haven't been like been able to really like play with each other like at the same time yet. So yeah. I mean, we're gonna see, but I mean, I don't know, because I don't know which I think, I, said, I, was, I, said, I, think was, I think it was Malik, that, Malik. It was one day where like one of them, that. one of them like came in the locker room and said something to X. <laughs> it was like the first time. It was like the first time like somebody actually like, start like talking. So I don't know. We talking yeah, about like Malik. that was me. I was trying to start something so we could have some because we kept losing in the fives against the. Did we guys. win that day? So, no. so that day, we won the next day. We won the next day. We won the next day. We end up losing that, that day, but the la- the next day, nah, the next day, 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 we won two in a row. So we sold. I mean, it, I it might playing. start a sign. But I, I, I can't. I can't say. I wasn't playing. But I can't say anything. I I wasn't. But since that point, since that point, you can't say the games haven't got better. No, they got way better. They've got way better since that point. So. I mean, we uh, our group yeah. been competing. The other group been competing, so it's been good. So that's good. That's good. So, did you guys all watch the NBA draft last night? Of yep. course, yes, sir. Is that okay? Um, yeah. Who who did you guys like when you're watching the draft? Like, what are some of the things you're watching for? Are you paying attention to like how guys are dressed and that kind of thing? And kind of maybe thinking about when it's your turn to go up there. You know what you're going to wear. Like, what are you thinking about when you're watching the draft? I, mean, yeah, I, I pay attention to I'm, my I'm looking at former teammates and stuff yeah, like that. that. People who yeah. I played with. That that's more. Yeah, because so you because Jalen and I were talking about this before we got here, Malik. Yeah, because you played with Jalen Duran, who got yeah. drafted last night, right? Who else yeah, was a, among a former teammate or a guy that you played against that got drafted? Um, Caleb Houston. I played um, Musa Diabate from Michigan. I played against him. It's a lot of it's a lot of people that you we played against that's getting drafted. So I mean that's what I tune in for to see who who I played and who who I played with. So that's really my yeah. That's what facts. Because it's like now it's like more of the guys like around our age getting drafted because like now we like are older. So it's like whether it be people like that I like personally know or like that I played with or played against or like and like last night like CB and Ocha they both from Kansas City. Yeah. It's like I'm I'm of course I'm tuned in for that. And then I was training with some of the other guys who got drafted. And then like he said, Musa, like that's my dog. So like yeah, that it's really like just like special seeing like people that like you worked with and like played against. It's like seeing them, you know, achieve that goal. Yeah. CJ, are you a Pacers fan? <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm a Pacers fan, but I'm more of a I, my favorite team is the Blazers. The Blazers, really? How'd you become a Blazers fan? My favorite player, Dame. So I'm gonna stay loyal to Dame. Yeah. Uh, you were cool with them okay. getting uh, Shaden, the mystery man. I don't, I don't. Yeah, like you said, it's a mystery. I don't, I don't know mystery. how to. You know, we just gonna see, see when the summer league. He gonna have to play. Good at developing right. those type of talents, though. <laughs> Right, just oh, they, like when they draft Anthony Simons, but I mean yeah. that was he was I don't know somebody. But he was he was he still he was already very skillful. I mean, but yeah, it was just it was totally different. Like yeah. his vibe, like and coming from a post grad was it it's, it just it's a different feeling. Like it's not the same thing, but it almost is. We don't know about this one. We gonna see though. Yeah, gonna see. Caleb, are you a Hawks fan? Yeah, I'm a Hawks fan. Uh, I got a love hate relationship with them though. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> I mean, if you you just gotta be from them just to know, like you can love them sometimes, you just gotta hate them sometimes. Yeah, who'd they get yeah. last night? <laughs> Depends. I don't even know to be honest. Yeah. I think no. I think I, um, they got Adrian Griffin. They got AJ yeah. Griffin. And, and, um, that's a solid pick. I mean, that's a solid pick. You can't go wrong. With him. They got they got somebody <laughs> else. I can't, I can't, but they got, they had two. They got two. Yeah, they traded away one of my favorite players, Cam Reddish, though. Oh, did they really? Yeah. With the Knicks now. I know. Mm. That's why you hate them? It's that love-hate relationship for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so CJ's favorite player is Dame. Who is all your other guys' favorite player? Scoop, we know about your affinity for Kobe. Who's your favorite player in, in the game right now? We'll start with you, Scoop, and then get everybody's. <laughs> Um, I like, cause like usually like, like a couple years ago, it would be like guys that like, 
like I really like like I like Jason Tatum. Of course, I like Steph. Like I don't like more like those those younger guys. I mean, everybody loved KD, but then I really just start paying more attention to like people who are like the same size as me. I'm like, all right, bro, I'm not six ten. I'm not seven foot. So like I I like I like CJ McCollum. Mm-hmm. He's a, he's a real skilled guard, and I like um also has like, a podcast. I like um Kevin Porter Jr. I, I like his game like as a lefty. But so, but I, I would say my favorite player right now is probably CJ. CJ, Malik, what about you? Um, my overall player is Giannis, but like, well, who I think I'm compared to, I see like a Julius Randle. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I can see that comparison. Caleb, what about you? I mean, my favorite player has always been LeBron, so I'm just a big LeBron fan. LeBron. <laughs> Like a lot. There's nothing wrong with picking LeBron, man. Are they gonna are, are they gonna do anything next year? Hope they get Kyrie. That's what I'm hoping for. They still it. gonna lose. They still I, gonna I, lose I, to go to state. Talking about getting Kyrie <laughs> and DeAndre Aiden. I don't know. All right, now they're doing too much. They're not getting they don't got that much cap space. There's no way. That's what I'm saying. You think this 2K or something? You hear me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, we'll leave. We'll leave. Jalen, what about you? I don't have, like, one specific favorite player, but I like watching guys like Chris Paul, Drew Holiday, um, Devin Booker, and um, Luca. Yeah. Yeah, you were saying in your uh, in your media availability that, you know, Jason Kidd and Luca are a couple of guys that you look up to. Yeah, which I, live in, I live in Dallas, so they're right yeah. here in my backyard. As far as a great Kobe, season this year. Um, Kobe and Jason Kidd are my guys as far as, like, all time who I really, like, look at. Kobe and Jason Kidd, you said? Yeah, those are like my all-time guys. Yeah. So, CJ, I'm curious. You know, one thing that I know as someone who is from Indiana and played high school basketball in Indiana is all of us who come from Indiana have immense pride in high school basketball from the state of Indiana. Do you talk a lot yeah, of trash sure. to uh, to these guys who are not from Indiana about uh, about hoops in the Hoosier State? No, I don't, I don't really. I don't really talk a lot of trash, but, you know, it, when the, when when the disrespect start coming for the Indiana high school hoops, I gotta I gotta stand on that. You know, I gotta. They was stand talking on about that. it yesterday. They was I'm talking about. We, it. But we, we was just talking about it yesterday. yesterday. But it wasn't. We didn't get into that. It was just the Indiana guys. Race. I mean, yeah. Trace, Gallo, CJ, like Lil. They were talking about it. Anybody worry nah, about? Talk, it. Anybody talk, worry talk, about talk, them, talk. dog? Remember, cause y'all was trying to disrespect and say nobody. You, that high school was Philly Wicks. You know? Y'all be – Wait, what are you calling? Philly, Philly Wicks. Yeah, that, Philly Wicks. That ain't how – Philly Wicks. Whatever they call it. Hey, hey, let's be right. Like, the high school teams came up to Indiana and played. Like, what do we rate that type of basketball, though? Hey, bro, that was – it was decent like, hoops. I saw – Yeah. Ben Davis was good. Fisher. There was a lot of bad teams with one good player. Like Facts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, That's how it be, though. But we got – No, we got but you can, y'all can't back. say so I, Indiana I, high school basketball is good. But we that's what I'm saying. Good play on eight team. <laughs> we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't go and recruit people. You I might as well, yeah, might as well okay. just play. Okay. You can't get a court. If we, can't, like one we can't. We can't. We can't. We can't recruit. We gotta. You, you live in the city. You go there, or like you, you can go somewhere close. But we can't go recruit out of state and do all the other stuff. Like you feel me? Y'all can. Y'all got scholarships to Mount Verde and IMG. We don't got that. But we not like, Mount like Mount Verde. We talking about like just states. Like who has like the best? Oh, uh, right. like high school. A lot of people that go Indy, to those type Indy, of schools not from. Indy there. definitely got. I think. I think Indy definitely got like the top high school hoops. Not all the teams in Indy, but like sectional, sectional ten, four, eight. Like that, that's okay. good hoop. If y'all play, if y'all play my team back at the crib, we beating y'all. We beating a few. We beating a few Indiana team. We might come up Public? here and win the state championship. If we, <laughs> we might have came up to Indiana and won the state championship. Oh, that's crazy! You see, that that's where we, that's where I got it. This is the oh, chance where I got to stand on it. Like it's, it's Florida, not gonna happen. Florida, CJ, like, I've got your back. No one, no school from Kansas is coming to Indiana. And yeah, he's like, it's not gonna happen. That, that, and that that's fine. You you entitled to your own opinion. Hey, that's cool. Malik. CJ, I speak, I speak for Caleb though. El, yeah, Indiana's not better than Atlanta. Oh no, no, no nah, not they public schools. No, oh, not no oh, chance. Oh, 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 no chance. Y'all not better than Georgia. We had the best school. public school in Florida last year, Calvi Christian. I think y'all is it was nice delusional. Uh, Georgia, nah, Indiana is a basketball. Indiana is a Georgia basketball. Over state. Indiana. 
Bro, Indiana is Indiana not better. basketball. Indiana bro. basketball state. DJ, you work the camp too, bro. You saw. Think you saw about it. it. Think about it. Think about it. Where where y'all where y'all where y'all play college basketball at? Indiana. Okay then. <laughs> It's all in there. It's yeah. all in there. This opened up a real can of worms. I didn't realize this was such a touchy subject, but this is fun. <laughs> I don't know what Carter, Indiana, Indiana public schools are not better than at Georgia. No, it's not at, at all. At all. Not great. I, okay, here's what I think a lot of people from Indiana would say is that talent wise, there's a lot of talent everywhere. You know, in a city like Atlanta, you know, probably has more talent than a lot of cities in Indiana. But I think where people take a lot of pride in Indiana high school basketball is the coaching um, and kind of the development of the teams and the player development and the ability for a state as small as Indiana to produce such an abnormally large number of guys who end up getting drafted. So I think that's what most people from Indiana would say. So there's probably, I would say, good arguments being made on both sides here. But to CJ's point, Indiana's still better. So that's probably the last word. Indiana. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who the last I'm person to come from Indiana? I'm done. I'm not. I'm not talking. I'm not, yeah, we're not going. We're not going to chat no more on that. Uh, I don't. Yeah. What I, don't, I don't think mean, we're going to make any progress Jay there. Jay Navi just got drafted. He from Indy. Blake He's Wesley from just got drafted. He from Indy. Like, yep. what you mean? I don't know. We never we we said y'all have good players. We said that. We know that. Yeah, players. I'm saying K, KB asked. KB asked who was the last okay, person from cool. Indiana. Nah, nah, Maybe two of them. I was arguing about like states, like public schools, like high schools. We're not talking about players right now. We know players is everywhere around. And plus, Ivy went to Lalu. That's that's an indie fool. He's not from Indy. He okay, went to we, spanked, we spanked Lalu three three times in a row this year. <laughs> Hey, so on the on the topic of Jaden Ivey scoop, there's a question I wanted to ask you. You know, last night Jaden Ivey, Keegan Murray, Johnny Davis, you know, all got drafted in the lottery. You know, and these are guys who you know were okay to pretty good as a freshman and had huge breakouts as a sophomore. You know, you're getting ready to enter your sophomore season. I'm curious, like, what their examples kind of mean to you as you get mentally prepared. For this season because i'm sure you saw there was a list that came out you know top 25 breakout candidates for this season and you were on it you know as a guy that was you know highly rated coming out of uh, high school and you know, probably didn't you know produce as much as you wanted to as a freshman but now a lot of people are looking at you as a potential breakout like do you take anything from those examples and and how they broke out as sophomores as you kind of get ready for your own sophomore season well i mean i really just see it as like an opportunity being there like as far as like the the list and the breakout candidates, like that's fool's gold. Like, cause you still got to put work towards that to you know actually have a, a really good season and you know have a chance at being drafted. But I mean, for me, just I feel like the same way they saw it was like you know I have an opportunity to play better this year and you know put a lot like put a lot of things forth that you know help me you know get drafted to the NBA, but more so just help my team win because it's like for them they got better their team got better like johnny davis won a lot of games for wisconsin this year keegan murray Jaden ivy like you know so they they really helped their team win which helps a lot more you know with you know that next level but you know for me it's just like i got an opportunity that i can take advantage of and you know it's gonna be um i would say it's gonna be more enjoyable because I feel like we have a better team this year, better schedule, and everything is just like, you know, going to work out in our favor with work being put in. So that's all I really see it as, just like, you know, a chance to go out there and, you know, build on what I felt I should have done last year. Yeah. Makes sense. Support for the Inside Scoop is also presented by Home Field Apparel, the presenting sponsor for the Back Home Network. And our friends at Homefield Apparel, they have the widest and most extensive collection of vintage IU apparel that you will find anywhere. And as I'm sure you've come to know, it's not just IU. They started with IU stuff and the Bison logo that kind of took everybody by storm. And they just did a brand refresh, so they keep adding to their IU collection. But they're also adding other schools like crazy. They have, I think, 120 schools now. And so as you're looking to shop for yourself or for the IU fan in your life, or even folks who didn't go to Indiana, Homefield Apparel is the place to go for excellent fitting, 
ridiculously comfortable, washable, vintage gear that really makes a statement uh, about your fandom. And so go to homefieldapparel.com, use the promo code HOME, H-O-M-E, to get 15% off your first order. That's homefieldapparel.com, promo code H-O-M-E. Now, back to the inside scoop. All right, so we got about 15 minutes left here. Um, so I want to do something kind of fun to end this. So I put uh, something together here. I might We're gonna go out it- before the 15 minutes, but my phone's about to die, so I might, I might get out of here in a little bit. Is it? Okay, well, yeah. Yeah, so stay on, you know. <laughs> yeah, so if you pop out, then we'll know why. But okay. we're going to call this teammate trivia. And so I came up with some questions. I'm curious to see how much you guys all know about each other and each other's basketball careers. And so we'll kind of go through here uh, and ask these questions. And Malik, we'll do, I have three questions for each of you about one of the other people on this call. Malik, we'll do all yours at the beginning. And other okay. th- after that, we'll kind of rotate through just in case you have to leave. Uh, and so I will ask you this question. If you hear this sound, which is the beginning of the Indiana fight song, of course, that means you got it right. And if you hear this sound, then you got it right. um, and we will I'm see. guessing who it is. I'm just guessing yeah. who it is. Okay. Is it multiple yeah. choice? Or is it? Uh, some, some of the questions are true, false. Some of them are not. So some of these are going to be a little bit challenging. Okay. So we'll go. You'll all get to see Malik do it, and then we'll go around with everybody. Uh, so Malik, here is your first question. Right. What position did Jalen's mom play at Lock Haven University? <laughs> oh my god. Do you know? Oh, I mean, okay, okay you know? think about it. Think okay, about but it. She's pretty tall. She, she, right. You see how tall she I'm is? I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking she played the three four. She played the three four. Mm, ah, Jalen will have to confirm. Cool. But I think I was, that's what I was going to say. That's what I would have said. That's what yeah. first thing that came to my mind. Just using my common sense, like me being a point guard, I would think my mom was probably a point guard. Come on, bro. I'm yeah. thinking like. I, 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 didn't, like I didn't think nothing more, less than a shooting guard. I would. Nothing less yeah, than a shooting t- guard. Yeah, he tweaked like, with the three posts. See what I mean? Like six he's, foot. He's right. five, mm-hmm. I, I saw what Lee was saying, though. I saw what Lee was saying. You, you I see, what I see where your head was at. Because, like. like what was saying. Women's sports, man, it don't matter how tall it is, man. You know what I'm saying? All like, right. And Malik's second stuff. question. Uh, what was Kayla's favorite sport growing up? Football. That is correct, which makes sense, coming from Georgia, which is football country. But that I is correct, that, right, Caleb? I heard that when we was going to church on Sunday, so I caught that at the last minute. So okay. I just caught that. Good timing. Yeah. Good timing. Uh, okay, Malik, your third question. When Montverde faced IMG in January of 2021, a game that Jalen alluded to earlier, who was the leading scorer in that game? Um, ooh. That's, wait, that last, this year or the day before? It would be two years ago. That okay, was, uh, so this uh, one's, that's when, okay, that's when it was at the Virginia. Oh, I know it wasn't Caleb. I know it was. It might have been Caleb. I think it was either... I can, can I pick two? Or just well, one? as far as I know, there was only one I'm leading score. I'm gonna pick I, two on, I'm gonna pick I'm gonna two I'm gonna pick the two leading scores on both teams. Okay. Derek Whitehead and and Scoop. And Scoop on both teams. Those are the both. I believe that is correct. I know Scoop scored 17 points, and at least the article I read I said. I remember he was that because because he hit the he hit the he hit a, a buzzer three. At the third quarter, and he looked at our bench, and he was like, "I'm on one," or something like he said that. He said something like that. I can't. Nah, you know I do remember what I said. You know, you know what? Oh my! This is so funny that we was just talking about all this stuff. So we were talking to CJ. We was like, how how like the Montverde IMG rivalry started, and we was like, when Jeremiah dunked it for game with two hands, right? Yeah. And they had came all the way back in the third quarter. And, like, I'm pretty – I don't know. No, I don't think we took the lead, but I, I think I might have put us down, like, three mm. or, or like two. That. I think it was three, actually. And I and I was, I was running to the bench. I was like, they seen this before. They seen this movie before. Because oh, yeah. I'm like, they just – something. They we just came back and won the game, but we lost. But, um, no, nah, that nah, I was chatting. No, nah, that game was good. I, that game was fun to watch, too. I ain't gonna lie. It was a good game. Is that a big rivalry between Montverde and IMG? 
Yeah, it's, it's starting. To, it's starting to get real big. We lost to them um, twice last year, and that ended up beating them to go to the Geico Championship. So it's becoming a bit rival in high school basketball right now. So, like a friendly type rivalry, like okay, we know we're some nah. of the best players in the country, or hey, like a during, kind of a nasty season, rivalry. Nah, during the season, I, I feel like it's a nasty rivalry because like yeah. During the season is like, nasty, but after like after the season, you know everybody cool because everybody go to those Jordan brands and McDonald's and stuff like that. We all kick it with each other, so I mean it's cool when we get to those type of things. But during the season, I don't, we don't look their way, they don't look our way, and then we just we just be playing competitive basketball on the court. Mm-hmm. Yeah. CJ, have you? Uh, what have you told these guys about the IU Purdue rivalry? <laughs> Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Nothing. I ain't, I have, I've never. Uh, Seen he he know about it, but he ain't been in it yet. Oh my! Yeah, I, ain't, I, ain't, I know, I know, I know how they be, but I, I, I ain't never. I mean, I felt the atmosphere in the crowd before, but being actually on the court, I can't wait for that this year. Just being on the court with my brothers, going to war. That's that's yeah. what basketball all about. Yeah. How would you describe that scene from last year's game, Scoop? Like I. The, the first thing I always say is I couldn't hear anything in warm-ups. Like, guys are talking to me right in front of me, and it's just a mouth moving. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I thought, like, it's like especially when I checked in the game, but it, even before that, like, I thought we were getting a stop every single play. Like, just, like, how we was playing defense, like, how loud it was. Like, I'm like, because I know they hear it, too. They Y'all hear this. Like, and it was like, like you couldn't hear nothing. You couldn't hear the ball bounce. It was it was like it had to be like electricity, like actually like in the air, because it was like so like like it it was it was crazy. And then like Rob hit the shot, but just like how the whole game went, like had to leave, lost it, and he and he tied it back up. It was it was it was a classic. But it's gonna be a lot of atmospheres like that, I think, this season. Uh, the the IU Purdue one is always special. Um, all right, Malik, you went two out of three. That's pretty good. So we'll see how everybody else does. And see who the winner is. So we'll go through. We'll go around one by one now. I'm sorry, Fino. I'm so sorry. (laughs) You should really. I think you should apologize to his mom more than him. Um, Wait, can I ask you a question, though? Yeah. You know what position my mom played in college? True guard. No, she was a center. She was? It makes sense, though, because she's not that. You know, she don't really really talk too much. Yeah. It's okay, though. (laughs) So we both lost. It's okay. I'm sorry, Fino. All right, CJ, I'm going to go to you with the next question. So Jalen is the sixth highest rated recruit to come to Indiana since 1999. Three of the other five are from the state of Indiana. Can you name two of them? Uh, one should be pretty easy. because You know one of them on your team. Trace. Yeah, Trace. Trace. <laughs> I don't, Trace. Oh, I know the other one. Go ahead. Romeo, Romeo not, Langford. It, Romeo Langford. It's Romeo. Trace wasn't one of them, though. Trace won one of them? I don't believe so. Yeah, I think it's one of them. According to 24-7, anyway. I'll double Ooh, check dang. this while you're thinking of the Whoa, other. One. Romeo and definitely Romeo. Mm-hmm. From Indiana. Ooh. Oh my oh, God. Man. I think you, if I'm not mistaken, I think you just never mind. I ain't gonna say that. I know, yeah, I, I know. think I know. CJ, but think. I'm trying, guys. Uh, 1996. Bro. Yeah, it goes back to 1999, the 24-7 oh. database. Oh, yeah. One yeah. guy is still in the NBA. The other one oh played for your God. favorite team. My goodness. Uh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Am I tweaking? CJ, Am I he's, still in, he's still in the league. Oh, my goodness. Vic ain't like from you, Indy. Uh, can, I, can I give him some assistance or Vic, something? Victor Aladipo. No. no, well, Victor wasn't even Cody a very Zeller. high recruit, is it and Cody he's from Zeller? Maryland. It is Cody Zeller. Know. Yes, it's Cody. You just met him. Oh, he was at the gym. He had the gym right now. I ain't think he was that highly ranked. Yeah, like, he said, I mean, yeah. He uh, but he was a I top fifteen nah, recruit. Nah. Cody did he just was, tell me he, he he played at Portland last year. I, yeah, bro, he had a Blazers shirt on. Yo, you he had he had a Portland shirt on. <laughs> oh my goodness, bro! Y'all got. I don't be looking at stuff like that. I mean, and, I heard they say he played for Portland. Oh, like, you know. uh, so the other one. So the other two who are from out of state are Noah Vonleh and DJ White, and the highest rated recruit in Indiana history is Eric Gordon, currently with yeah. the Houston Rockets. <clears throat> for now, he was he number one. Traded. He was number one. Not about Eric. He was to NC. Yep. I mean, yeah, NC. 
Yeah, he was number one or number two in his class with Derek Rose, I think, was in the same class. Those guys were one and two. Um, okay, so CJ missed that one. Uh, let's go to Caleb. Uh, uh, Caleb, where did Malik commit first before making the wise decision to come to Indiana? Oh, man. No brainer. Come on, G. Nah, I thought man. this one was going to be too He committed to Florida, Florida, Florida. He's talking about some knobs. All right. <laughs> hey, hey, he's hilarious. <laughs> okay, so you got that one right. Jalen, I'll come to you with the next one. So this is a true or false question. True or false, Malik had a double-double in the National Championship game and the Jordan Brand Classic game. That's false. <laughs> that is false. I need to get back to the, uh, to the sound. Malik, do you remember your numbers from those two games? Um, I didn't have a double-double in the um, National Championship game, but I did have a double-double in the Jordan Brand. Wait, see, I have it. I have it different. I have you as 14 and 12 in the title game and 10 and 9 in the Jordan Brand game. Oh, was it 10 and 9? Why do people keep telling me I had a double double in the um Jordan Brand? They probably be rounded. They probably be I, rounded. Yeah, they, they might have they might have rounded up there. I thought I thought I had 10, 10 and 10 in the Jordan Brand. I didn't know how much I had in Geico. I thought I swear. Yeah, it could so depend I'm on wrong, where you I'm look. wrong too. So I'm wrong where? too. So. <laughs> well, at least where I looked I and got stats. That that's what it said. They um, rounded stats. Yeah. All right, Scoop, I'm coming to you with this one. Uh, true or false, Caleb averaged a double-double last season at Fayette County. True. What was the answer? True. Correct. 23 <laughs> points, 10 rebounds, like 1.5 steals a game, right, Caleb? Yeah, sound about right. Yeah, KB. Like that. KB nice. was getting okay. busy out there. Playing against the Tilly. <laughs> Tilly, yeah, um, all right. Okay, okay, so we will go to we'll go to CJ next. And CJ, here's another question about Caleb. True or false, Caleb scored more than 2,000 points in his high school career. True. That is true. That be is 2K. Correct. All right, guys. My phone that is That is correct. What was, what was the final number, Caleb? The final number is like 2,000 and 100 in the 100. So I don't, I can't remember. Maybe more. I don't know. I, do you I know who the all time, do you know who the all time leading scorer in Georgia history is? I do. Mm. Oh. Is it Lou Williams? It is Lou Williams. That's hey, right. 3,300 points, I think. Mm. Bonus, bonus yeah. points. Hey, there for hey, look, how I bet, and I'm not even from your city. It had to be sweet, Lou. <laughs> That's the only about it. Who would it be? I mean, like he was cold. Like he's still cold, but high school he was that guy. I mean, it could have been a couple of folks. Uh, okay, Caleb. The next question is for you. Uh, CJ okay. set a school record for three pointers in a game. How many did he make? Oof. You got to think big. I'm gonna go with nah. He had here like nah. That is correct. What was that night like, CJ? Man, I just – I couldn't miss. I was pulling that boy from being near half. And everything was going in. I'm talking about, nigga, as soon as I caught it, going in. <laughs> like, did you know in warm-ups that you were that hot? Or did it just kind nah, of develop through the game? I really I really went into the game. I injured uh, – I don't know if y'all know, but I broke – I dislocated my thumb my sophomore year. So I came back junior year and I hit it the game before that. So I had a bandage wrapped around my shooting hand. And so I didn't think I was really going to go in shooting that well because I had a big a big wrap over my hand. But I ended up setting the record that game. So I need to get that wrap back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, you ever, if you're ever in a shooting slump, just get the wrap back and see if you <laughs> can recreate that back. magic. Um, all right, Jalen, this question is for you. What was Tamar's season high in scoring last season in a game? Um, <clears throat> he did it twice. Bonus points if you can name one or both of the games. Uh, it ain't that high. <laughs> it, 13? 13. Very good. <laughs> Do you know which which opponents? It was against Big Ten teams. Um, 
I really forget, honestly. I want to say. Was Penn State one of them? Mm-mm. Was it Rutgers? Or no? Nope. Of course not. Nope. Yeah, nope. honestly. Illinois. Nope. Are you just guessing? You're just throwing team names out? <laughs> I really don't know at this point. I really don't know. Do you remember, Scoop? Yeah, it was um, Nebraska and Michigan State. That's right. That's right. A huge first half against Nebraska when things were not going very well. They got that game pointed back in the right direction. Okay. Impressive, Jalen. Another question correct. All right, Scoop, coming to you with this one. Uh, CJ was recently named the MVP of the prestigious Indiana-Kentucky All-Star Series where he averaged a point per minute across the two games. How many points did he score? And minutes played. I don't know. Like, across no, two games. One game. Oh, across two games? Across two games. He scored a point per minute. How many points in the two games? I know he had 41 in one of the games. <laughs> come, come on, Scoop. Come on, other, Scoop. I didn't know it was two. It's two. It's two games. Nah, two think games. about it. Just think about it. Yeah, yeah. Think about, yeah, think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Point per minute. So what? He had he, he scored 82, 81, 82 points. 80, no, 81. <laughs> yeah. nah. Okay, think about what you just said. Forty-one yeah, points think, in one think game. You seen he scored a point. Points. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, and it's thirty-two minutes. Thirty-two minutes in the game, right? Oh man. <laughs> I'm saying, Scoop, you think about it too hard, G. <laughs> and, and the 41 is right, though, right? Is that is that your answer? Is 41 no. your answer? No. That's My answer, answer is um, 70. 70. Yeah. 70. The, the answer is 41, G. I had, the I had 20. I, yeah, I had. Bro, what you read on the, on the Twitter thing? They, they, that was two games. That was two oh, games. Okay. I thought that was one game. They said, "Why would they do that?" They they put one know. game for forty one points, but they they wrote it wrong on Twitter. You see, that's that's you feel me. That's what I'm talking about. I think that's, that's what I did. said. I know he had I really like that in one game, <laughs> so I really got it right. Well, but if he scored a point per minute across two games. Probably not going to be forty-one, but I see how the you game, might. I game, see how you might have game, gotten that wrong. The games was like each game, each was like forty minutes, so it wasn't. Yeah, it was twenty. We we played twenty minute ass. All right, so we'll say that's wrong with an asterisk because because it Twitter was right, steered but you it was wrong. wrong though, like you said. Okay, we'll give you like partial credit for that one, Scoop. Um, okay, one more question for each of you, CJ. Uh, Scoop became an NIL pioneer last season uh, by striking a deal with an Indiana podcast to do a series of episodes during the season. What podcast was Tamar's show a part of? I ain't gonna lie, Scoop. I do not know this one. I mean, you own it, but you just don't know the name. (laughs) Inside the Scoop. Inside the Scoop. The show was called The Inside Scoop, but what larger podcast was it a part of? What larger podcast Ooh. published those episodes? I don't know. I don't know that one. It is The Assembly Call, which is the podcast that you are on right now. But we will not take oh, that assembly. one. That is okay. <laughs> right, so that's, on me. that's on me. I, I just thought I was on Inside the Scoop. Well, it is. It's The Inside Scoop on The you Assembly Call. The inside the Scoop. Yeah. <laughs> the inside <laughs> But okay, really uh, a couple more here. Caleb, uh, Jalen's Instagram links to the Fino Project. Uh, uh, what does Fino stand for? Oh, my God. He don't know. <laughs> but, no, be young. but come on now. Come on now. Fino. I don't need no help, Fino. <laughs> Failure. Don't, Failure. Show the, don't show the tat. Don't show nothing. Let me say it. Let me say it. Failure is no option. Failure is no option. That is correct. Very good. Why couldn't I get no, why couldn't I get no question like that? I, I need a question. <laughs> well, I, was, like I knew you would know the answer to that, Malik. I wasn't going to give you that one. <laughs> um, okay, a couple more. Jalen. Uh, okay. Um, yes. Who averaged more points per game out of anyone last season? On this call, who averaged the most points per game in last basketball season? Caleb Banks. 
Just beat him out. CJ averaged 23.5. Caleb averaged 23.0. Okay, okay. You know, you know, you know CJ putting up his shots. Ain't nobody in here. Yeah, yeah. Let him tell the weeks. <laughs> Let him tell the weeks. I heard that. That's what I was saying. Oh, like, God, <laughs> it's cool. Malik is still throwing shade on Indiana high school basketball. I'm saying he's <laughs> still, not hey, on been calling, I've been hearing them call him the Tiddly Winks. You know, <laughs> you missed about half a point, though. You good, Fiend. You two for uh, three? Let's see. Okay, so Malik was two for three. CJ, you were one for three. Caleb, Caleb got every question correct. Uh, Jalen, two for three. And Scoop, you have one more question. Um, okay, so like Malik, you decommitted from your original college choice after a head coaching change before committing to Indiana. You both committed to Indiana in April, just one day apart on the calendar. So a year apart, obviously, but one day apart on the calendar. Which one of you committed earlier in April? You or Malik? Oh. So you got to really know your dates to get this one right. Ooh. Can I give Scoot a little hint? Absolutely. I went do I went the week before the the little whatever it is. Who's this? No, 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 no. This is April. Little five. The week before the love, you know the love, they have all the parties every day. Little five. Little five. Oh, um, so yeah, so day, I went the week before that. Week before that, day before. And that was it's the same day. week though. It don't really same, week. It's... same week. So it's day before. I think <laughs> I'ma say I'm gonna say me. Hey. Oh. Malik committed on April 18th. You committed on April 19th. Hey. That's crazy. That's that a hard one. Really, that really is crazy though. Oh, I didn't crazy. know that, but hey, that's that crazy. is that is a difficult one. Okay, so <laughs> Caleb, you are the winner. Three yes, for sir. three. Congrats, Congratulations. An excellent bad. performance <laughs> here on the first edition of Teammate yeah, Trivia. Yeah, KB. On yes, the sir. Inside Scoop, yes, which is on what podcast, CJ? Assembly Call. The, the Assembly Call. That's right. Yeah. By the way, uh, Jalen and Malik, before we get out of here, I know you guys are uh, Hoosier Hysterics NIL ambassadors, Hoosier Hysterics, a fellow uh, Indiana basketball podcast. Is there uh, anything that you guys want to say in your role as ambassadors to to help promote up the NIL collective? You want to start it off, you know? I mean, sure. Um, you know, I don't want to speak from league, but for me, it's just um, it was a blessing to be able to, you know, have this opportunity um, you know, just to add a platform to be able to collab with them. And, you know, I've been looking at the Who's Your Steric stuff for a while now, ever since I committed to Indiana. So, like I said, it's definitely a blessing. And I'm looking forward to, you know, continuing the you know, partnership with them. Definitely. It's a blessing, um, you know, just to get to know them, um, be on a podcast and do a couple posts for them. Um, they do a lot of stuff around Indiana basketball. And, you know, it's just truly a blessing to be on, um, an ambassador for them. So, thank you. Thank you for that. All right, so do you guys have time for one more question, or do you guys need to roll? No, we're good. We got time. Okay, got time. so I had a tiebreaker question in case you were tied. You weren't because Caleb won, but I'm curious to see what you guys will say. So your head coach, Mike Woodson, scored 2,062 points in his IU career. That's the fifth most in IU history. Uh, and Trace is also on the short list of players who have scored 1,500 or more points. There have been 17 of those. Do you know how many points Trace needs – this season to pass Mike Woodson on the all-time IU scoring list. Probably like 374. Okay, so 374. Who was that Caleb? Yeah. Okay. How much does Coach Woodson have again? 2062. And Trace has at least 1,500. So that gives you a range. So Caleb says 374. I say 450. Malik say... says 450. Jalen's thinking. I say, I say 370. Okay, CJ says 370. Thinking like 462. Jalen says 462. Scoop, do you have a guess? Um, three, 320. Nah, 344. 344. Like somewhere around there. Jalen's going to win this one. Trace needs 474 points. So Jalen was the closest at 462. 
So if Trace averages 13 and a half points over 35 games, which is what he averaged his freshman season, he will do that. What amount of trash talk do you think that there would be between the two of them as if Trace got close to that to that record? <laughs> I mean, it's always so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Woody know how to trash talk too, so it's gonna be some yeah. big time trash talk. I bet Woody, Woody is a good trash talker, isn't he? Yeah, great. He wouldn't be. He wouldn't be worried about it. He's still his favorite line. Yeah. If I if I if I could still get on this court, that's what you always be talking Bless about. Y'all. <laughs> that's awesome well guys hey thanks thanks for doing this i appreciate it scoop thanks for putting this together this was a, a great way to bring the inside scoop back and uh anytime you guys want to come back on the assembly call you're welcome and i know i speak on behalf of our entire audience when i say welcome to bloomington good luck in your freshman season and uh we'll be cheering you guys on as the season goes on so yes, thanks sir. for coming and have a nice thank day. you thank you for the time yeah. Thank Absolutely. you for school for setting it up. Yes, sir. Yep. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. All right, y'all. All right. And thank you for being here for this edition of the Inside Scoop with Tamar Bates. Really glad that we were able to get this going again. We have some more episodes planned for the future, but my thanks to Tamar for being here and for setting this up. And, of course, thanks to Jalen and Malik and Caleb and CJ for being here and having so much fun and being so candid and, you know, just giving us a little window into uh, to how those guys interact. Uh, a real treat for everybody who follows IU basketball. Thanks, of course, to our sponsors, uh, the presenting sponsor of the Inside Scoop Speakeasy Sales Copy. Make sure that you go to speakeasysalescopy.com and see how Clay can help you drive more leads and more business to your business. Uh, and, of course, our friends at Home Field Apparel, the presenting sponsor for the Back Home Network, Go to homefieldapparel.com. Use that promo code HOME to get 15% off. And thank you again for being here. Until next time, as always, keep your elbows in and your eyes on the rim. Go Hoosiers. Go Hoosiers.